Greetings folks, welcome to Bob of All Trades. NVIDIA's Dynamic Boost is here for the RTX 3000 series laptops. Now whether you are a consumer or a tech reviewer, understanding how this works and how it will affect benchmarks will be critical to providing cohesive content for everyone. Let's get into it. Today I will be using the GS66 Stealth featuring an 8-core i7 and the RTX 3070. The 3000 series GPU is now labeled as a laptop GPU. Low wattage parts will no longer feature the name Max-Q. NVIDIA is now using Dynamic Boost which allows the GPU to pull higher wattage when a specific CPU wattage is met. Our 3070 in this GS66 Stealth is an 80 watt part that will dynamically boost up to 95 watts. To demonstrate Dynamic Boost, I will be using the Battlefield 5 firing range, and as you can see, the GPU is at 80 watts. Now for this laptop in CPU configuration, the GPU will not boost past 80 watts as long as the CPU is pulling 40 watts or greater. But when we limit the CPU wattage to 35 watts using third-party software such as Throttle Stop, the GPU will now boost up to 90 watts. And then when we limit the CPU wattage further to 30 watts, this is where we'll finally see the GPU boost up to this laptop's configured maximum of 95 watts. The difference between 80 watts and 95 watts FPS performance in this specific test is about 10%. Now that was only one example, and user-created CPU wattage limits via third-party software in attempt to gain FPS performance with dynamic boost will not always yield the results you're looking for. As shown in Warzone, all we're doing here is creating a CPU bottleneck. As CPU wattage moves down, GPU saturation also moves down, and FPS performance does not increase. However, certain titles that are not as CPU bound will see their GPU dynamically boost up to its maximum, in our case, 95 watts. Now in many cases, laptops with Full HD and Quad HD resolutions still require substantial CPU grunt to fully saturate the graphics card for maximum performance. These resolutions require strong CPU performance that bring high CPU wattage that often limits dynamic boost. What this also means is that some benchmarks will be less valuable. Both Firestrike and Time Spy tests are created to run your PC in near perfect scenarios separating extremely GPU-bound and CPU-bound situations before combining them, then providing a score for all three. The graphic score is often taken as a measurement for gaming performance and with dynamic GPU boost, the accuracy of this measurement has been compromised. So when you see our 3070 laptop GPU sample with its Firestrike graphic score of nearly 24,000, and Time Spy graphics score of 9500, that's a laptop 3070 score that was able to successfully dynamically boost to 95 watts. In the real world, a fully dynamic boosted laptop GPU is an inconsistent scenario with current CPUs and resolutions under 4K. It's also a far cry from desktop 3070 performance with its 220 watts and 15% core increase. Desktop 3070 graphics score is over 31,000 for Firestrike and nearly 12,000 for Time Spy. Now let's demonstrate a graphics score benchmark result that better reflects your gaming performance. To do this, I'll simultaneously run Firestrike along with a synthetic CPU load such as Cinebench R23 or Ada64. This will force the CPU wattage to raise in attempt to impose an 80 watt GPU limit. Obviously, this is not the way you should be running your benchmarks, and this will clearly limit your CPU's physics score, but it does paint a different picture worth understanding. I tried to limit the GPU wattage using MSI's Voltage Curve Editor, but the 3070 still wanted to dynamically boost, making that method inconsistent. As a matter of fact, dynamic boost was still shown to creep up in this modified attempt to explain dynamic boost within this benchmark regardless of synthetic CPU demand. Nonetheless, our Firestrike graphics score is in line with what an 80 watt RTX 3070 might produce. This is still a good score and faster than a 90 watt 2070 Super, just not by the landslide some of these unrealistic measurements offer. So what's the conclusion then? All right, dynamic boost works but CPU and resolution will bottleneck dynamic boost on laptops 
under many scenarios. The 3070 inside of this device performs somewhere between a 90 watt 2070 Super and a 150 watt 2080 or 2080 Super, and I think that's great. But the best thing about all of this is something I have not specifically talked about yet, but you got to see in this video. And that was thermal performance out of the GPU. This is critical. Never before have we seen this kind of performance in a thin and light and only running around 60 degrees Celsius, give or take a few degrees. And the reason why this is happening is because the 3070 in its desktop form where it had originated from is a 220 watt part. So not only we bring this down to 80 watts or 95 watts, effectively cutting it more in half, almost a third, but we took away 15% of the CUDA cores on top of that. While performance is still good and it's not up to those desktop standards, it is still really good. And thermal performance now is something that many of you are gonna crave. All right, folks, that's gonna do it. Hopefully you enjoyed my talk about Nvidia's dynamic boost, how it will affect laptops, I'm Bob of all trades, and I hope to see you in the next video. Still here? Great! I reviewed this GS66 Stealth feature in the RTX 3070. Check it out and see if it suits you. And if you're new here looking for more content, the playlist is well organized for your convenience. Thanks for watching.